Hi everyone, Peter here from Movement and Performance, and in this presentation we're going to be talking about range of motion for weight training. Um, and we're going to be talking about do all athletes actually need to use full range of motion during their weight training, and also at different times of the year are different ranges of motion going to be useful. So first thing we need to cover, what is range of motion during lifting? There's no trick questions here, it's essentially just how far a joint moves relative to maximum range or a bunch of joints um, move relative to maximum range in an exercise. So some examples of that is a squat um, and how deep we go. So we could go um, full depth, which is basically as deep as possible. We can go half depth, a quarter depth, that sort of thing. Um, height of a pull up. So obviously pulling yourself all the way up and hanging all the way down is going to be um, full range of motion. We can always manipulate how high and low we go, and then some sort of press, like a bench press or an overhead press, um, locking all the way out is going to be full range of motion and coming all the way down. Obviously, we can manipulate um, how much range of motion we use during these exercises. So, moving on, um, for hypertrophy purposes, we almost always want to use full range of motion in our exercises. Because full range of motion is essentially going to mean more mechanical work done by the muscle, which is um, the primary driver of muscle hypertrophy. If we can get, um, for example, in this picture, this behind this text is a guy doing some weighted dips um, with full full range of motion. Um, that's more mechanical work than if he, than if he was not to go that deep down. Um, also, it's going to be more stretch under load with, with full range of motion, um, and this is starting to gather some research as an independent um, driver of muscle hypertrophy, at least um, at increasing fascicle length. However, if you have some sort of injury or condition that may prevent you going from full range of motion, and that's then obviously not recommended. However, in for healthy individuals that can um, perform exercise with adequate technique, full range of motion is almost always going to be more beneficial for hypertrophy purposes. Moving on, now for strength. So this is where it gets a bit tricky. Uh, the, the strength requirements depend on the athlete. So the range of motion we're going to use is also going to be dependent on the athlete. And so I've got an example here to um, outline what I mean by this. So in terms of squat depth, if we have a weightlifter versus sprinter, we may have different, um, we may have them have squat to different ranges of motion. So a weightlifter is almost always going to use full range of motion squatting because it's part of their um, sport. And uh, reducing the range of motion is only going to hinder them. It's going to allow them not to express the strength that they need in these deep ranges of motion of the squat. However, a sprinter, for example, almost never gets into um, the the range of hip flexion that a weightlifter will get into. So do they really need to squat to that depth? Um, and it's questionable, but they probably don't need to, at least not all the time or as frequently as a weightlifter. So what are going to be some benefits of full range of motion, even if we don't need it? Um, basically, full range of motion is going to allow maintenance of active joint function so if we never get into certain ranges of motion with um, under load, then we're essentially never really using that joint to its full potential, which may cause issues in the future if we don't maintain that function. Um, ranges of motion can also provide uh, variations to the training plan. So for example, if we're an athlete that doesn't really need um, full range of motion um, of some sort of exercises, if we can maybe then get them to perform full range of motion, we may provide a good variation that's going to drive um, some stimulus for strength gain or hypertrophy gain. Also, and probably most importantly, um, full range of motion may enhance uh, health and longevity, which sort of ties into that first point we talked about, maintaining um, full function, full uh, active joint function through that entire range of motion. So, now, just for some general guidelines and some takeaway points, um, we need to use the appropriate range of motion with context in mind, as with every other, as with every other training principle. We should progress from full range of motion to then specific ranges of motion. 
So if we utilize that full range of motion at the beginning of uh, training periods, then we can get those uh, benefits in the previous slide. And then we can then transition to specific ranges of motion when we're close to our peaking in order to get the full potential, um, in order to, sorry, um, have the most transfer to sporting performance. So using specific range, use specific ranges of motion for peaking, as I just mentioned. Um, so I've got a sprinter as an example here, like we talked about before. This is a good way to outline it because we're on the topic. So we might use full range of motion squats far away from competition, just to build some general strength and make sure we get our health in check. Uh, in check. And then when we get close to our, when we need to peak for, for competition, we may use something like quarter squats or some sort of um, partial range single leg squat, which is going to have more transfer to uh, sprinting performance, just because full range of motion, really deep hip flexion is never, we're never gonna get into that during sprinting. So just like this graph, full range of motion and transition to specific ranges of motion. So that's it for this presentation, guys. Hopefully you got something out of it and thanks for watching. Um, you can follow Movement and Performance on Facebook and on Instagram with the details here. And, and if you haven't already, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can stay up to date with the latest informative videos that are posted. Um, again, on social media, so on Facebook and Instagram, you'll find these research infographics which are gonna be beneficial to curious individuals probably like yourself if you're watching this video who want to learn more. These are essentially the latest research summarized into these easy to understand graphics so that you can stay up to date with the latest research in sports performance training. Thanks for watching guys and hopefully you got something out of this video.